We'll continue with conductance in electrolytic solutions and today we'll be doing molar conductivity. In the previous presentation we did specific conductivity which is mostly known as conductivity only and you will have to understand the difference between the two because the specifications in both of them are different. It's just the manner of expressing conductivity but you will have to understand when we can call it specific conductivity and when we can call it molar conductivity. Before I read out the definition which is the first point I will be repeating myself I think the nth time that in a definition every word is important. Koi word kisi definition mein faltu mein nahi likha hota. If you skip a word, if you miss a word, you will be writing, you will be learning an incomplete definition. You will be learning an incomplete concept, right? So I will read this out, pay attention to every word and that is how we will complete the definition of molar conductivity. Molar conductivity of a solution at dilution V is the conductance obviously and it is the conductance of all the ions produced from one mole of the electrolyte dissolved in V cubic centimeter of the solution when the electrodes are one centimeter apart and the area of the electrodes is so large that the whole of the solution is contained between them. If you remember specific conductivity, hum log ek cube ki dimensions lete the. One centimeter mein hum sari, one cubic centimeter area of cross section mein hum sara volume mein hum sara hi uh, conductivity calculate karte the. Yahan pe we have to put the electrodes one centimeter apart but the area should be uh, so large that usi area mein sara solution aaye and us solution ki jo aap conductivity dekhoge when one mole of the electrolyte is dissolved in v cubic centimeter of the solution that conductivity is called as molar conductivity of that solution it is represented by lambda the simple is lambda with a subscript of small m now in order to know its mathematical equation we have the relationship between molar conductivity and specific conductivity. So in order to know molar conductivity, firstly you must know the specific conductivity of that solution. Molar conductivity lambda m and specific conductivity kappa have these following relationships. The first one in terms of volume, lambda m is kV into V, V is the volume of the solution. In terms of solution, you will write it as lambda m is kC into 1000 by C where C is the concentration of the solution and if we are expressing that concentration in terms of molarity this third one is the most commonly used representation of molar conductivity lambda M is equal to KC kappa specific conductivity at concentration C into 1000 divided by molarity of that electrolytic solution I have written the specifications here, kappa is the specific conductivity, V is the volume of the solution and C is the molar concentration. Keeping in mind all of these and we know the units of all of these individual parameters, we can derive the unit of lambda m. Units of molar conductivity are ohm inverse centimeter square per mole based on the based on this equation or ohm inverse is equal to Siemens you can write down the units as Siemens centimeter square per mole these are the units of molar conductivity now the second part in conductivity is very important that you have to study the variation of molar conductivity with concentration when you decrease the concentration and when you increase the concentration we basically what we do is we take an electrolytic solution and we dilute it so that is what we have to study with dilution when you increase the volume of the solvent how will the conductivity how will the molar conductivity of that solution change now in the last slide I've taken these graphs ye ek hi graph hai tino ke tino graphs between molar conductivity and concentration hai and but they were a little different from each other there were some details in this some details in this so I thought of taking all of them when we study it, when we study the variation, we'll divide it in two parts. We'll first study in case of strong electrolytes. How will it vary? How will the conductivity vary with dilution in strong electrolytes? And later, we'll see how will it vary in weak electrolytes. 
Now, in case of strong electrolytes, we have a proper equation to study this relationship between dilution or con concentration with molar conductivity. The equation is known as debye huckel on sager equation, and this is it. Lambda Cm is equal to lambda naught M minus A under root C. Lambda Cm means molar conductivity at concentration C. Lambda naught M is the limiting molar conductivity. We'll see what is limiting molar conductivity. Jo infinite dilution pe, when you reach the infinite dilution, us waqt jo molar conductivity hoga aapke electrolytic solution ka, that is called as limiting molar conductivity. Lambda naught M minus A under root C. C is the concentration. What is A? A is the constant. And this constant, the value of this constant, depends on the electrolyte. Which electrolyte are you taking? Nature of the solvent and temperature of the whole setup. Right. Now, lambda naught M is written here. It is the molar conductivity at infinite dilution and is known as limiting molar conductivity. Now, since we have the equation and we have to study the relationship between molar conductivity and concentration, what we do is we plot a graph. We plot a graph between molar conductivity and under root C. And we study the graph. We study this relationship on the basis of that graph. And this is the observation. I have highlighted certain words, which obviously means it is very important to learn, to understand, and then to remember these relationships. We observe from this graph that when we plot a graph for a strong electrolyte, like here, I have a plot for KCL. It is more clear in this plot, and it is here also. It is it's completely linear here, which should not be the case. Uh, it is basically like this. Potassium chloride ka jo yahan pe plot hai, this is the correct plot. What is it? That it is a linear graph at low concentrations, but it is not linear at high concentrations. You can see when we plot it, concentration against molar conductance, and we study just this plot, the plot of the strong electrolyte, potassium chloride, what we see that it is linear, but it is linear only at low concentrations. Just say concentration baregi, it is not linear. And reverse will be the relationship with dilution. More the dilution, it is not linear. Less the dilution, it is linear because dilution and concentration are opposite terms. This is very important that the curve shows that there is an increase in conductance with dilution. With dilution, we have agar we some study karenge fir se potassium chloride ka and this is the plot of concentration to dilution hum ulta read karenge study karenge we observe that with dilution there is an increase in molar conductance jitna aap zyada zyada solvent add karoge number of ions since it's a strong electrolyte number of ions will increase conductance will increase which in this case is molar conductance so this point is also important that there is an increase in conductance with dilution with dilution, therefore, conductance increases. I have again highlighted it. That is what actually we have to study. How does it vary? It increases. And it reaches maximum limiting value at infinite dilution. In case of a strong electrolyte, there is a maximum value, which is called as lambda naught m or lambda infinity m. It is called as maximum limiting value at infinite dilution, but only in case of a strong electrolyte. Sarahi understand karna important hai. You will have to understand the uh, theory behind the highlighted points and subsequently remember them. Now in case of weak electrolytes, in the plot, the weak electrolyte that we have taken is acetic acid. It is similar in all these graphs. Acetic acid ka red line hai yaan pe. This, the lowest plot is of acetic acid. And here, the blue one is of the weak electrolytes, which can be anything like acetic acid. What is the relationship? Okay, the first thing. Agar aapke paas do electrolytic cells hai, dono mein concentration of the electrolyte is the same. We are not changing concentration. Concentration is the same. But ek mein weak electrolyte hai, dusre mein strong hai. So, very easily you can decipher that jis mein weak electrolyte hoga, uski conductance kam hogi. Because it's a weak electrolyte, its dissociation ka degree is lesser. So thus, its conductance is weaker as compared to the strong electrolyte at same concentration. But then, if we take this weak electrolyte ko 
with dilution study kare not in comparison with the we did the comparison with the strong electrolyte now let's see what happens to this weak electrolyte when we dilute the solution there's an increase in conductance with dilution again ye jo plot hai x axis pe aapka this is concentration to jab aap dilution study karoge in the reverse direction aapko study karna padega and in the reverse direction you can see that molar conductivity is increasing with dilution jitna aap solvent add karte jaoge utna there will be increase what is the reason reason first reason is that it was a weak electrolyte iski rate of ionization rate of dissociation into ions was slow since you increase the solvent sabse pehle wohi badh jata its rate of ionization increases and with decrease in concentration which is increase in dilution and number of uh, ions will also increase obviously the subsequent result is there will be an increase in conductance however you have to remember it does not reach a limiting value whereas in case of strong electrolytes we will have delta not m in case of weak electrolytes we do not have delta not m i have taken this table in which we have a uh, variation in concentration in the first uh, column then we have under root of concentration isi ka we have a weak electrolyte acetic acid we have a strong electrolyte hcl we have other we have a salt also and what we can do is we can study the trend in variation jaise jaise concentration decrease ho raha hai which means hum dilute karte ja rahe hain with dilution you can see in both these cases in case of the weak electrolyte as well as the strong electrolyte molar conductivity is increasing right in both of them in everything in salts also the molar conductivity is increasing and it is very easy to in, uh, study the trend and accordingly we can plot it in the form of these graphs this is uh, the one i like the most is major plot says are the clear here as per the description this is the plot of the potassium chloride a strong electrolyte this is the plot of a weak electrolyte acetic acid and these two are intermediate salts barium chloride and nickel sulfate this one is almost the same this was a little clear i do not like the kcl ka plot really it's too linear in this case but i thought of keeping it because the you know no general view on the increase or the decrease is a little clear in this plot that's it